investigation into Trump's finances really makes all of this quite plain. It didn't reveal, as many had posited, connections to Russian oligarchs that would have fed the fantasy that Trump is a foreign-controlled agent. It would ultimately be very comforting to think that our national nightmare was created by some evildoer in a foreign land. Instead, it showed that his web of financiers was much closer to home. He was propped up and financed by American capitalists and consumers. As the Times put it, he slapped his name on everything from steaks and vodka to a board game in Cologne. He signed a licensing deal with the Serta mattress company that eventually netted him more than $15 million. Another $15 million would pour in from Trump neckties, shirts, and underwear by clothiers like Phillips Van Heusen. Warner Music paid $100,000 to feature Mr. Trump in a collection of cell phone ringtones. Unilever, <laughs> which was looking to promote a new version of its all-brand laundry detergent, concocted an entire multi-platform marketing campaign around Mr. Trump. Trump's famous amorality is also a deeply American creation. We have long ago abandoned any pretense that our society should be structured around a set of common values or, God forbid, the good of the people. No, we're a nation that lionizes the bankers who foreclose on your home, the moguls who pioneer new ways to crush the bodies and the spirits of workers, the drug makers who make billions off of addicting and murdering our brothers and sisters. Our best and brightest are expected to graduate and work at a place like J.P. Morgan Chase, which was just fine for running a near-decade-long criminal financial scheme to rig metals markets, or, like Pete Buttigieg, went to work for McKinsey fixing bread prices. Then, the pundits expected to land when they, how dare you, sir, Donald Trump, or expect voters to judge him based on some moral compass. What moral compass? Our entire society is set up to convince you that the rich deserve their wealth, that GDP growth is more important than jobs and vitality in your town, that the stock market is somehow real in any meaningful way. Any morals are selectively applied and only to the poor and to the working class, not to rich guys like Trump. The rules never apply to him. So why should they now? His primary political innovation was to understand the presidential race not as a contest of competing values and ideas, but as a ratings-driven spectacle, one in which you are ultimately protected from your adversaries by the fact that they are also on the take, profiting handsomely off the entire show. In that, he is a true pioneer, but one who is just continuing the work of the past set down by so many before him. So many greed-is-good predators that came to mark that path, extending the soulless absurdity and debasement of late stage capitalism all the way into the White House. Joe Biden may beat him, but there will be no going back because Trump has revealed the all-American nature of our rotten core.